Hello, my name is Cassandra, trainee health psychologist, and it's great to be back here with my friends, Mid and North Powers of Mind. Now, today I'm here to talk about some of the great new courses that Mind have coming up this autumn and to explore a little bit about how we can make accessing those courses a little bit easier and more comfortable for you. We understand that online courses are something new for many of us. And so I'm going to go through today six tips that can help you to feel a bit more comfortable using those online groups and courses. Maybe help with what Ever anxiety or whatever discomfort that you have going on around that. Now, being in an online group with people who aren't your close friends or your immediate family can feel a little weird. You turn on that camera and boom, you're suddenly greeted by a great big image of your own face. Oh, well, that can be really distracting and it can make us feel really uncomfortable. For a lot of us, it's also something new and perhaps we haven't done it before. And that fact certainly has the potential to make us feel even more uncomfortable using this amazing technology. Using our webcams can make us feel exposed. It can make us feel nervous and it might bring up some uncomfortable or difficult feelings for us. I know this because I've experienced it myself. <laughs> so although I do look comfortable and reasonably confident using my camera to talk to all of you, from my own experience, I really have to admit that it hasn't always been the case. And although I'm used to teaching in big rooms full of people and even public speaking, webcasting has been a new challenge for me and I've adapted to that. So today I'm going to share some of the things that I've learned along the way uh, that have helped me to find a level of comfort and confidence so that you can really gain a bit more benefit from that when you're joining some of the courses and groups we have going on here at Mind. Number one tip, remember you're not alone. And there's some really good evidence to suggest that feeling uncomfortable sitting in front of a webcam is really not so unusual. So let me reassure you, you're certainly not out of the ordinary if you feel that way. Some recent polls by web conferencing providers and research suggest that many people do feel self-conscious or anxious about sitting in front of a webcam with as many as 49% of people being worried about their appearance and feeling self-conscious about being there. However, some surveys also found that over 60% of people who participated agreed that seeing other members of the group on their webcam increased their engagement. So, people don't enjoy being seen, but they do enjoy seeing others. And what's more, they do seem to get something more out of online meetings when people are using their webcams. So, something to bear in mind when we think about using our cameras is that we're contributing to the experience of the group when we and others who are participating will probably have an, a more enriched and productive experience if we do make that leap and use our cameras. So remember, by being brave and having a go at tackling that webcam anxiety, you're doing something so valuable. You're contributing, engaging, and you're enriching your own experience and each other's experience, which is wonderful. Number two thing expose yourself. Oh, no, not like that. We're not talking about anything inappropriate here. What we're talking about is you spending time with your camera in small doses and becoming friends with it so that you can really get used to it without being in a group with others. Something that I found that has really helped me is just turning my camera on and getting used to it when I'm not broadcasting or participating in meetings and groups. 
doing that will allow you to get to grips with your camera's settings. It can also allow you to find a comfortable place to use your camera and get the lighting and the positioning right and all those things. Those things can help you to make sure that you don't run into any technical glitches and they can also help to make sure that you feel heard and seen properly, which is important. The more you see your own face in a camera, the less weird it's going to become for you. It's also worth mentioning for, the, for those of you who are less confident about your appearance that some webcam software uh, contains lighting filters and some of them even come with more complicated ones or even fun ones. So those are things you can experiment with and have fun with too. One really great and useful tool I really do recommend is that if your camera software has a mirror function that you use it. As human beings we're used to seeing our faces in mirrors and so <laughs> when we actually see them the opposite way round to how others view them it can be a little weird. So this is what what can be, it can be a little unnerving. Uh, we're looking at ourselves the wrong way round. So if your camera has that mirror function, switch it on. It can make the experience less uncomfortable for us because we'll be viewing our own face the way we normally see it. Okay, number three tip. Try a breathing or mindfulness exercise before you join the group if you're feeling nervous. Both of these techniques can really help you to deal with situational anxiety very effectively. Those of you who've learned those techniques on some of the courses you've been on before are going to understand how useful these psychological tools are and can be. They are designed for situations exactly like this one, so use them. If you need a little help or a reminder of those, you should check out John Paul's breathing exercises or Mike with his mindfulness um, and just that can help you to get going with those, a little reminder. I really recommend that you check those out because both of these techniques can really make a huge difference in these types of situations as well as many other situations that can cause us to feel those flight or fight symptoms, those little anxious feelings we have in our body. Number four tip, when you're in the group, focus on other people, not your own camera. When you're in the group, you might find it useful to only allow your camera to be active when you're speaking. Otherwise, try and focus intently on what others are saying and make eye contact with them as they speak. Psychologically, that can really help to nudge your brain into treating your Zoom meeting like it's a, a regular face-to-face -face one. Also, if your camera is switched on, using those physical cues like eye contact and smiling can really help to show the person that you're listening to them and that you value their input to the group. So that's a really great way to engage with others during your online course. Number five tip, before you speak, be prepared and focus on what you're saying. When you're speaking, trying to focus on what you want to get across. Part of what makes me confident in what I do is that I concentrate on the information I'm trying to deliver to you, which I prepare in advance. Because I'm confident in the knowledge that I'm sharing, that can also help me to feel a bit more comfortable. So you might find it useful to have a notepad and pen with you so that you can write any questions or comments that you might want to contribute so that they're there before you start talking. I found it useful to imagine that I'm talking to a real person in front of me because I am. <laughs> it's a lot easier in a group where people have their cameras on because you can actually see who you're speaking to, of course. This might not be such an issue for you if everybody is using their camera. Last tip, number six. Remember, it's your choice and you're always in the driving seat. Remember that whatever else happens, you're the one making decisions about using your camera. It's your home, it's your time 
and it's your rules. You have the ability to dictate how much or how little you contribute. And you should never feel that you need to make yourself distressed or obligated to be involved in an activity that you do not want to participate in. Just like our normal groups here at Mind. Our online groups are safe and they're confidential and none of the practitioners who are delivering groups will ever expect you to engage in activities that you don't feel comfortable with. You have the ability to shut off your camera or even leave whenever you feel you need or want to. So those are my six tips for you. I hope that they help you to engage with some of the great new content that we've got coming along in the autumn, which you can access online. Thank you for watching the video. Let me know how it all goes. I'd love to hear any feedback that you have from any of my videos or for any of the courses at Mind. Just contact Becca. Thank you. I'll see you all again soon.